پرستیز میرسه Good afternoon, good evening to our feature speaker, counseling psychologist and family therapist, Dr. Kenneth Niles, specially invited guests, Mrs. Rabia Khan, president of Interclub Trinidad and Tobago, Ms. Anna Maria Mora, well-known psychologist and columnist, our president and vice president, board of directors and executive board members, and to you, the ladies and gentlemen of the viewing audience. We would also like to recognize and express a warm welcome to the attendees we have here tonight from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and all the way from Australia. We thank you for joining us tonight. Welcome everyone to Spotlight Endometriosis Session 4. For those of you joining us for the first time, the Spotlight Endometriosis series was designed to highlight and intimately discourse about the issues that the endometriosis patient faces on a daily basis. And you would agree that those issues may be too many to mention or address in any one session. So we decided that in this first session, for this first season, sorry, we would focus on endometriosis and mental health. I think every endopatient would agree that mental health is a very real and important topic generally, and even more so given the social changes every society have experienced, has experienced in the last year. Tonight, we focus on the coping strategies that the endopatient could adopt to help alleviate the stresses the disease brings. It is our hope that at the end of this session, that you would have become more aware of some of the strategies that may be useful in coping with the disease. And in that respect, we must offer um, our disclaimer that the information shared on this program is for general informational and educational purposes only. It does not constitute professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment for individuals. Please consult with your healthcare provider if you have questions about your health or before starting any treatment. So as I mentioned earlier, this is session four. In our first session, we had Ms. Blatia Lee from Endometriosis Foundation of the Americas. In session two, we had Ms. Danica Alvarez, Caribbean Curvy Strong founder. In session three, we had Ms. Nikki Crosby, um, endometriosis ambassador for the TTEA. And tonight, we have Dr. Kenneth Niles. Dr. Kenneth Niles is the chief executive officer and president of Emmanuel Ministries International, IMIL, and his Global Concepts, a consultancy company. He is a certified mediator in Trinidad and Tobago. He is also a coach in foundational and advanced mediation training, conflict and management, crisis intervention, and trauma. This counseling psychologist and family therapist is also an adjunct lecturer at the University of the Southern Caribbean in the Faculty of Social Sciences, and also within the same at the University of the West Indies. He's also the author of books addressing male issues with a focus on the restoration of the male man called Man to Man. He has also founded a publishing company called His Publications. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to you Dr. Kenneth Niles, our feature speaker for tonight. Am I on? Oh, yeah. Ooh. This looks like a classroom, only names, no faces. <laughs> Hi, uh, any gents? Uh, are there? So, ladies? 
Hi, well, you know who I am by name, and you see me. I, I've gotten accustomed to the classroom, so I'm not expecting to see any faces. If I do see, <laughs> you see mine, a, okay? There's a colleague. There's a colleague. Hi, Anna. Uh, good night. Oh, good I, night. You've gotten so accustomed to names rather than faces. But again, I'm here. Thanks for having me. I was just trying to find out which cologne I should wear tonight. So I guess <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. I, if I can't go out of the house, I could dress up and stay in the house. So I, yes, yes, I, am, I do very well for them. But I, it's, it's exciting to have this privilege to talk on a subject that I've heard about years, many years ago, but 20 years ago, of a friend who had interviews this and was pregnant and got had a baby and the doctor was so amazed that she could not know pregnant and eventually she had a second child. And I was so amazing for the medical staff of the nursing home that she was with. Since then, I have not had anybody encounter that. My wife, a bit of a shedding of the lining uh, remonted. That was, I thought that was endometriosis, but then I realized, no, it's not because there was no uh, attaching to the other parts of the body. So I am glad to do some research, to have done research and to be reacquainted with this. And I, I think that I need to continue the journey of acquainting myself more with all these ailments because recently I have had references from the uh, Eric Williams Medical Complex. People have been referred to the, now to psych psychologists to have to help with their pain management and their chronic diseases. So people are realizing that pharmacology is not the only way forward. And I'm glad that the future of psychology has some um, some scope because basically uh, we are not we are not needed because everybody is always all right. Uh, and uh, so good to know that it's going to be changing. So here am I. Uh, my wife just stepped out. She was in the room here with me. And so you'll see her face momentarily. Uh, to talk about intermediates and mental health coping strategies. So I don't know what you expected, but I am not the kind of orthodox guy who wants to just talk a lot about psychology for you. Because I think that coping has to do with you waking, waking up, coming out of your bedroom, putting on some clothes and facing whatever, the kitchen, the toilet, the yard, the car, the, the traffic, the job, the grocery store, the malls. How do I face that? So, of course, you know this screen too well. Um, you've seen it, you've looked at it, but I thought I would share that with you a little bit. Uh, you have to come and show their face. They want to see who you are. Uh, this is Mrs. Kalina Niles. Good night, and, everyone. Um, the wife of my youth. Uh, for you know, we have five kids and eleven and a half grandchildren. <laughs> you all can laugh or say something, clap now or something. Oh gosh! Oh my God. Good night, Mrs. Niles. What are you saying, Natty? Good night. Good night. Abisha, Gloria, I'm say fine, something. Mrs. Now. Niles, how are you? Oh, Lord. Fine. Good night. <laughs> Nice to have you. <laughs> well, say something. Give a hand, JD, Bridget, Lisa. Hello, I'm oh, <laughs> Call them out, Dr. Nice. Call them out. Good evening. Good evening. Kendra Barad, Rabia. Good evening. I love your hair. I love your hair. <laughs> oh, you. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, Mrs. Miles. You look wonderful. What are you doing? Is it good treatment? Oh. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Oh, very good. Yes, treatment. yes. I, I invest. I invest. It's all part of my future. So it's a, so the thing about my wife, and that's a good thing. I, I, my wife was always most of the most of our marriage. I remember when we got married, she was on medication. She always had these allergies. So medication is something I have never not seen my wife take, but it has not allowed her from being who she can be. Uh, she's had that issue of the, the allergies were very, very bad. And uh, then she was anemic. I remember one day I was talking to her by the table and I looked around, she wasn't there because she had slipped under the table, fainted. Uh, 
uh, but to be, be able to have kids. And then she had this woman shoe with the fry broids and the um, lining and oh my goodness, medication, medication. Uh, but I've always in, encouraged her not to focus on what is happening inside. Let's, in terms of the physical, let's see. And out of that, she's been able to go forth and be a professional, and be a manager, and be a mother, and a grandmother, travel the world. Uh, so that I thought that that's again, because many people will say to her, how are you managing? Um, she, I know if she would testify, she's always had pain in some way or the other. And then she had ulcers in my, oh my, you know, my from, from the anemia. She, uh, and there were other kinds of repercussions from that. And, but it was a matter of the overcoming. So even with this picture here, with all this is the dark brown spots, which, which is the endometriosis, uh, you know it, but that is just the internal context. And I know you might be saying, he's saying just. It's not a matter that I am diminishing the, the issues here, but this has happened or this is happening. Where do we go from there? So you know it occurs uh, when tissue similar, just I'm trying to get rid of you, yeah, to the inner line of the uterus, also known as the intermetrium, is found outside of its normal location. So where it's supposed to be into that matter, it comes out and then it results in information. Of course, you know that, and it will res respond in a monthly fluctuations of the menstrual cycle. So there's an ir irregularity. So who is affected? Uh, it just affects people mostly in the reproductive years, and we know between the ages of 18 to 50 plus, uh, especially uh, that means include adolescents, disease can impact all aspects of life, school, career, finances, relationships, overall. Uh, the symptoms may be so severe that individuals miss out. And I want to talk about the, tonight how we can work out that miss out on school and work and sports and social events. Uh, where is affected? Generally, endometriosis is found in the pelvic cavity. It can attach to any of the female reproductive organs outside the uterus, fallopian tubes, ovaries, and I know you know all this, uterus carcral ligaments, uh, the petronomium, all that thing with the liver, the kidney, et cetera, around there, the uterus, the vagina, large and small bowel, rectum, appendix, diaphragm, lungs. And you must be saying, Jesus, that's the whole woman? You know, it's like, what's left? My arms, I mean, but it's like the inside that you can't see between neck and bottom is like, it's affected. So what's going on with me? But let's see what more can go on with you. Affected, yes. Mild to severe intermittent chronic lower back, pelvic and abdominal pains. And we, we, we have that kind of thing. How do I manage that pain? Infertility, subfertility. Yes. I could get pregnant, but maybe I may mean, not go for to, or oh, there might be the sub, maybe the, it might be in the tubes. So that we, we have the risk. And so therefore that kind of makes you wonder, oh, what's going on here? Painful intercourse. Wow, I really want to have some good sex. I want to feel that penis. I want to really enjoy it, but oh my gosh. Sir. Next week, maybe next month. Uh, and I'm not satisfied. So I'm affected there. Alternative bowel movement, uh, how does that work? Urinary urgency, I can't control, painful. The, the list is there. By the time I read this list, you could be getting depressed. Uh, you know, it's kind of wonder what's going on. So the, is this really the created body that we read about in the Bible, created in this image and likeness, you know, wonderfully made? God, you must make a mistake. Something going on here, I am affected. And so I want to look to see who am I now? And I have three nouns here. Well, three abstract nouns, sorry. Uh, femininity, womanhood, motherhood. And I think that encapsulates who you are as the created female. Uh, that encapsulates the, the femininity, the concept of gender and the function and context of sexuality. That's who I am. I was made that. I was made that with before, all before this Indo issue, the concept of gender. Yes, I know I have a function. I, I have a place here in terms of my 
being female in the context of sexuality, how I present myself, my beauty, my hair, my nails, my very oral, how I inter interact in terms of establishing that uh, characteristic, my womanhood, the ability to present an individual of self and enterprise. I, I am intelligent. I have skills. I can sew. I can create. I'm a, I can be a manager, a doctor, a nurse. I, I can be a teacher. I have that self. Am I going to let, oh, sorry. Is, I, will I be affected? Will that happen? And those questions are real. The am I, the could I, the would I. Look, you see me? I don't know if I could be a woman anymore. I don't think I could get anywhere anymore. I, I am so riddled with. Let's see tonight how we can help that. Motherhood, wow. The capacity to nurture, I do have that. But with endometriosis or not, I still have the capacity to nurture. If I have the personality and characteristics that foster civilizations, I am part of the making of civilizations. What I can do to help people, whether they're babies, children, adults, I can be a mother. Maybe I may not conceive, but I can be a mother. Is that possible? Is that asking too much? Am I jarring your expectations and the feelings of your culture that says, hey, you know, you can't be this big, you can't be a woman unless you bring forth a truth of vagina or maybe a Caesar, I don't know. Uh, but the issue is that there is the need for us to see motherhood is not just about birthing truth the vagina or birthing uh, by conception. There is a natural concept of nurturing that you, we need to look at tonight and see how that could be part of our coping mechanisms. So endometriosis, the agony, the reality, carcate normalcy. What is a normal day for you? What's a normal life? Oh, can I be normal? Hmm. That's a good question. Would I be able to accept myself as normal? Huh? Would you? Would you? I am with my wife, you know. I suppose that sometimes she'd be like, I could see her watching the tablets on the table and say, Oh my gosh. And I myself say, Oh, you get there. But of course, you know, at my age, it's time for tablets. So, by the way, y'all can laugh too, eh? Why we uh, make you stay Don't look, don't look so serious. Okay. Uh, so when I always have this thing, what is this thing? This in the this thing. So how do I go on living? I want, there's an agony here, the pain, the discomfort. And more so too, it's not just about the discomfort of the physical, but it's the discomfort of the mental, the mind, that whole psychology of how I address me, knowing that there, is, there are expectations of my, my, my family, my, my family members, my uncles, my, they want something from me, you know, somebody wants a brand child but so how do i go through that agony how how intimate shows the terror have i lost self have i lost my spouse my significant other uh, do they really want me anymore i remember sometimes when i would say to my wife that uh, oh, she want to have sex and it's like you can't because the period just keeps you well I, I, as i said there was this thing with the um fibroids and the lining and Sometimes it was just be bleeding and just these clumps and you, but I had to let her know, hey, there's more to you than sex. Sex, can I be, can I, can you allow me to engage you as a spouse and find meaning rather than wonder if there's a question mark after the word spouse? Family, yes. My family can love me. I can still do things. I can still decide that I will go out and laugh and, and play and, and romp and go to, to, to the river and to the sea. I may not bathe, but we can walk in the sun. I know about that. My wife loves to go to the beach to walk in the sun. And we can do that. Relatives, they have their, their thoughts, but I can work that together. Friends, ambition. Can I still go on and find my university degree and get that big job and get promotion? Can I open my business or am I going to be always so sick? Profession, vocation, ah, those big titles. Yes, it seems to be a terror, but alas, we can find meaningfulness uh, because we are still human. So coping, outside looking in. And I want us to, to look into our own self, our very being, not to look into the uterus and the the endometriosis and the, uh, the kidney and the 
the way about that to touch that pain is the pelvic area there. No, let's look into me. I wish you had a mirror by you. You could look at that mirror and see your nice hairdo if you have a hairdo. But whatever. You, those nice eyes. Look at look look now, look at the lips. You know, look look at there's something beautiful there. Your your whole being, the bus line. The, some of you might say, so, so if you only see me here, you think you whether you need a diet or not, irrelevant. You're, be you're beautiful. All right. And I think you need to see it upon yourself. What was I before disease? How was I? I, I had a lot. There was something about me. What did I have? I had something that I, I loved, something I worked with. Can I still work with this? So I can have a reflection of that great person and the strength that has a challenge now. Uh, I, I have accomplished and I can still accomplish. So my tagline here, I am feminine. I'm still female. That is not lost. So that's part of my coping context. I am still female. I can still function as a person. I can function, F-U-N-C-T-I, I can still do. I'm still the person that has a great sense of humor. I'm still the person that still can make a good cake. I can still, I'm still the person who can manage and play football, play hockey. I'm still the person who can go shopping. I'm still the person who can change that person. Maybe my, I can still, I can still do. I can still see the beautiful person on the inside. I think if we have this, in what, it's not just an introspection, but a belief of yourself and the value that you have. Psychologically, that begins to ease the pain. That begins to bring you into a place of appreciating tomorrow. Are we going to get there? Can I get off my bed for today? Can I really face somebody and even face me? And even face me. So coping too, moving on with me. I have to move on with me. I can't move on with anybody else. The plants that I have, they are not sick. My body may be a little challenged with all this issue, but the plants are not sick. My vision is not sick. The adventures are still real. I still can do. They're still out there. They're still the avenues for new experiences. Can I push myself to that? I, I was being cheeky with a, with a, with a young lady. I, I said cheeky. I, I was really being real with her. She's talking about she can't go forward. I said, but your mother pushed you out. If you don't push, things will happen. You, know? you will not be dead if your mother didn't push you out that, from that womb. And so our very life existence comes out of a pushing experience for some of us who, whose parents would have had a normal vagina delivery. For others, we see we've had to push to get through doors or push to get through things. So therefore, there are still ways for new experience, but we have to believe. And we, even though we do that, the pain is still with us, but we can I not take the pain with me? It is not about taking the pain or not taking the pain. Hey, you're a woman. I am woman. You wanna say that with me? I am woman, three, four. I, I am, am a woman. woman. Yes. There's still the ability to discover and to be innovative. You still have. You're not D E D. Sorry, D E A D. You're not dead here. You're not, you know, you, you might be a little slower, but that still doesn't mean that you cannot discover. I teach gerontology at UE, and that's it's aging. And we, we teach aging not in the concept of you're done, you now start. So there's a revival, a reviving of experiences and, and vigor and rigor. And even with us as elders, we know by the time we reach out to 65, so we get in all these little pains, the little arthritis coming in. Little, but we still go in. We still go in. The people, that lady who got a PhD at 96, she, it was not she was in all pain. I, I, did, I went to graduation in the law school. The lady at 74 came up there with chronic uh, diabetes and, and uh, other liver and kidney, but she went through because she understood the area. And, and that is coping, the, the, the press to, to work out. So you must be asking Dr. Nice, where's the psychology here? The psychology here is reaffirming your oneself as who you are, woman. And we're dealing here, not trying to define a transference context, or, but to understand from, 
using those thoughts if you want to say we could do some C CBT. So, uh, you know, we could call that um, beaver therapy here and say, hey, get that mind, baby, get that word and get that thought and bring that thought into action. That thought is I am woman. I can discover and benefit. I, there's an ongoing opportunity, opportunity that I want and I desire. I can achieve that. There's the assurance of my, uh, and that's what wrong is, uh, of, my, uh, of my capacity. It's not assurance, it's assurance. Uh, of my capacity to be su supportive. Uh, so, so it's important for that. There is that assurance of my capacity. I do have it. So the thing about a woman is that sometimes we want people to make us that. You want some man, some girl, somebody to tell you, hey, you're good. No, believe in yourself. Start with you. Don't wait for the doctor, especially them doctors. Them doctors ain't telling you nothing. They only want to, mom, for you to feel worse by telling you, but we try this and we try that. By the time they try and all that, you let yourself know that I can overcome. And there's something we call psychosomatic uh, in, in terms of the fact that sometimes our, how we address these issues, we are averting the issue or rather diverting ourselves from depression, anxieties of I can't, I don't know how, I'm not feeling, I wonder who cares, nobody cares, I don't know how this pain is, oh gosh, it's not a bad night. Hey, hey, good music, good music. Let's change the song now. And realize that the same person who's singing that song, that Jerry song, still has a laugh somewhere. That has a belief of a capacity within us. So we we moving on with me. I am taking me forward. Those tablets I, I'm taking are fine, but I still have to do something more than that. I was sharing with my wife today that tablets are not going to always so many make us well you know. You have to have a mind to make you well. Whether it's mental, physical, psych, whatever the tablets are for, it is all an aid, but you, the body has what it takes to heal its own self. But we have to learn to affirm who we are and how we go forward. I am a woman. I can do it. My, my third copy, I'm reaching out for me. The reaching out is not just to please you, but I'm reaching out to let you know me reaching out. I have ability to produce. Yes, to produce. Look at my kitchen. I've made, I've made muffins. I can sell. I made. Look at my my handcraft. I could do that. I'm still be able to stitch. I can, I can paint. I can produce. I can go in the garden. I can do a draft. I can do an essay. I can write a book. I have the ability. I am reaching out for me. I can give a helping hand. Somebody's help. I can support. So you, you see in there the, the, the reality of you going foul. So I'm, we are not sitting down in a chair moping. There is no rocking chair here and there's no closed doors and drawn curtains for you here today. I'm sorry. We can grow. We can cause things to grow. We are, I'm a mother. I was born with the capacity of motherhood. You ain't losing that. Nothing can take that from you. Not even God could take it back. <laughs> Sorry, not even God can take it back. Hmm. What you've been created with, that's you. So your creative abilities to produce is always there. Now, as I always preach to people, and I, I, I was, by the way, I'm also a pastor. It's not about the, 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 the seed and the, 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 the sperm and the, the seed to give a child. Creativity has to go beyond that. When we read Proverbs, we see that the virtuous woman makes money. She is an entrepreneur. The Bible speaks as a, of a woman as an entrepreneur wife because mothers have creative powers. All my eyes, all that thing you read there just now is because I have a wife that brought those things forth. She, because she's a creative. I put my ideas in her. I, I'm a seed plant. All I have cannot have a seed. I don't have no production nothing. Or even my mouth I could talk with. But to cause things to grow, my wife has the womb. She has those creative abilities. I have seed. I take my ideas and I plant it in there. I had added to the immediate. She's the one. Find the 
university, find the program, go, graduate, masters, do this, doctorate, everything I have, they, my daughter is part of that too. Even though she's not my wife, she's, she's, a, she's a woman. Daddy, come, get this going. Let me study. Daddy, get this thing going. It's because you have that creative ability to produce. And you're a nurturer. That's what mothers do. You have the means to fashion, the means to, to bring into being. Yes, we are vision. You're a visioner. You can see down the road. I see that child, you know, look at that child. That's the boy. I know you're going to be great. And you're putting that money in the lessons. And you're putting out, you can't produce. And you're giving them the vitamins. And you're giving them the, and you want to eat right. Because I see it down the road. Yes. I can do, is it a piece of land? I could put, at COVID-19, I see all the women suddenly became gardeners. Eh? If you see a backyard full of tomato and okra, come on, uh, helping us, say a little thing, uh, say yeah, yeah, yeah. A lion? Oh, no. The cry go on sleep, nobody here. <laughs> Are you fishers, ladies? Yep. Do you produce? Do you yes. see yourself developing? <laughs> So do you see that that's a generational context? You are going to have things going on. People could say yes later. Hey, you know, let me get a name here. Yes, you know, uh, Christy did that years ago. And this is what we see. You know, Rabi, Rabia, she, she, she has the way of creating, she created this handbag and she, you know, and Victoria, oh my goodness, she has this creativity there. She could talk, 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 and she said these things, you know. And Bridget, oh, what a fine woman. Oh, very sophisticated. Oh my gosh, you know. Oh, she has this air of how she, elegance. And she, you could do these things. You are a visioner. So that, that helps you to cope. See, if we can understand reaching out beyond ourselves, you already see yourself working the coping mechanism. In crisis, which you may have had maybe in your first experience of being told, going through the pain, then we found the resilience. But we got that effective interpersonal context and we found ourselves going forward, making meaning, trying to find out, I've helped you in the last couple of slides to see if we can make meaning of who we are, of what is happening with us. Evil is a terror. We are feminine. I'm a woman. I'm a mother. And there's that kind of mother that brings out an emotion of love, an emotion of togetherness, an emotion of affection, of attachment. I am not alone. And so that, that push helps me to go forward to see myself facing further on. So today I face today. So I take hold of today. I hope you see yourself jumping there with your ribbon and having a little dance. Why sit on the values that are within you? Why? Come on, let's jump and dance. I know, no, I mean, if it wasn't for COVID 19, we would have been really some of us jumping and dancing. Mm -hmm. So, a little way, why sit on the values that are within you? Why, 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 why sit there? Because it's about today. Why, why compete with the issues of pain? Let the pain be the pain. But as you work through th those rationals of you being feminine and you being womanhood and woman and you being mother, you are going to recognize where did that pain go because there is so much going on for you so much of you are able to see your today and that's very important my intent to to, to be me overpowers the weakness of my body so whatever i intend to be me that brings me more strength to go over the weaknesses of my body. So my body is having its own, but I am not going to be as weak as my body. I have to be stronger than my body. So I am carrying that weak part with me. And that weak part has to know, hey, hey, Rabia, you strong. Hey, you know, Christy, Lisa, we stronger than you. Pain, we are stronger than the pain. Don't let the pain get stronger than me. No, I'm woman. 
You ever hear about me? I am a woman. I came here to establish the rule in life and to bring into being. I am a mother. I have I can notice I have that capacity. And when that pain usually comes, a pain for a woman makes you push out and a child comes forth. I can bring a human being. I can bring something into the world because I know how to handle pain. It must not represent weakness. I can see my tomorrow, but I must have, but I have to live today first. By the way, that's my saying, that's Niles 2021. I can see my tomorrow, but I have to live today first. Is that okay with you? We want tomorrow, but we have to live today first. We can't get tomorrow without today. <laughs> so let's see if we can take hold of today. Get it off of the values, working with them. Don't compete with the pain. If you have an intent, have a focus. That gives you, and we go forward. We're going forward. I jo oh, sorry. I join my victory to cook, to design, to produce, to publish. I joy, I joy so I can dance. I joy. I join seeing what is happening with me daily. I, 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 I am with this thing. I am in this thing. I am in this thing. You notice there's no uh, <laughs> pharmacology here. You might want, you might thought I would say, well, take some depressant tablets. You, <clears throat> you could take all them. And I could call the names for you. I know them very well. But you could take them all. But you still, you still have to take them. And still we have to apply psychotherapy. Pharmacology is fine. But the psychotherapy is what makes you move your foot makes you move your hand, makes you live your today so that you can see tomorrow. That's where my victory is. I can cook, I can design, I can produce, I can publish. I can manage, I can. I can. I clap for myself, I can, I can. So, taking hold of my tomorrows, taking hold of tomorrows. Where is my tomorrow? In whose hands? Look at your hands right now. Look down where you are sitting. Put your hands up and see the way. Look at your hands. I want to see. I, I can't even tell you open your mirror. Oh, go. I mean, your thing, but it'll be good to see you looking at your hands. Look at your hand. Look at your hand. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, I have one hand there. It's Gloria, right? Look at Gloria. Your tomorrow is in those hands. Where's my tomorrow? When is my tomorrow? Uh, when? 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 The palm of my hands. <laughs> uh, in which plan? In which plan? You have to have a. You have. Oh, sorry. You have to have a plan. When you? In which you have to have a plan. You must have a plan. Do not get up without a plan. You have to have a plan. You must know that when is my tomorrow is where your plan is. Once you have a plan, it means you are going forward from today to tomorrow. How is my tomorrow? Progressive, successful. I've already seen it. Why? Because I have that capacity as female, as a woman, as a mother. I am progressive. I have growth. I have growth genes. I have success. That's where my tomorrow is. What is my tomorrow? An experience of joy and persistence. Because wherever there's joy, you must persist to keep the joy or otherwise you will lose it. Yes? We going so good so far? Do you yeah. understand? So that it's important for you to define your tomorrow. It's in your hands. It's in the palm of your hand. It's in your plan. It's in the progressiveness of your, your, your life, that capacity to go forward, the success that you can have. And you can see it. You can believe it. Where is my tomorrow? What is my tomorrow? An experience of joy. So, can you breathe? Can you live? I live. I breathe. I move. I establish. I nurture. So let's go through this. I breathe. So that you are breathing. And that could even be an a, a exercise. Because in breathing, ten, 10 nice deep breaths in three sets, that helps the blood to flow, adrenaline gets into the brain. It works out neurotransmitters. We relax. Amelgada is doing fine. Oh my gosh, hippocampus is finer, and we can face that tomorrow. I live. 
I live. I live. And then I can move. I'm not living to stop in one place and cry and move. I am moving. What do you do? You move to do what? Establish. You move to let it be known. Is that true? Yes. yes. Yeah, man. I know too. Therefore, once I've established now, I take responsibility. These are my possibilities. Possibilities. This is where much going on there. I know too. I can take my hands. I can be involved. I can groom. I can encourage. I am fruitful. I'm seeing what I have established take certain changes. That means there's growth. I'm fruitful. I'm blessed. And the blessed there is the blessedness, the fact that, that you are a fulfilled person. You are not unfulfilled. And so therefore, we can see the movement of hearing for the first time and going that you have this disease and taking you on further in context of where that puts you. Whether I go through all the treatments and uh, the painkillers and the hormone treatments and all that, and some of you having all the, the side effects. Fine. Dr. Nice is not diminishing those experiences, but I will say beyond with all that, it is important to breathe and to live. I've gone through my own catharsis. I've gone through my own experiences of physical trauma. I've gone through a coma. I've, but I've learned to breathe a little bit. Up to now, sometimes I still have um, side effects of all that event that happened maybe seven, eight years ago. But I am not letting that stop me. I am moving. I was so, I am when I, when I, when I came out of hospital and, I, and that was the same year my son graduated with his PhD in New Zealand. And they said, you're, going, you're not going to New Zealand. I said, let me tell you something. Sickness, I am not taking it with me. It may be in my body, but I is going. They have thing called wheelchair. I is going. <laughs> and I pressed. My wife agreed. My medical doctor, but I can say this way, he had to agree. And we arranged it well. We made sure we put all those ticks in, wheelchairs, wherever you go. And it was the best service I've ever had. Better than walking all through all those airports. Uh, but it was a matter of my mind telling me, hey, Keda, you can. And I had a beautiful month uh, traveling down yonder. Way down to New Zealand. That means to travel alone 13 hours in a plane. My doctor was, was conf he was, a, he couldn't understand you. The oxygen levels can kind of, your body, can, I say, Mr. Mister, apart from all this, don't forget who I am. I know my God. So, with that and my mind and my psychology and my sociology and my love for my, for my son and my love for, for, for tomorrow, especially for tomorrow, I move. So that I can, un, I can appreciate the concept of pain. I have not been with, as I said, up to now, my body pains daily. <laughs> it's not intermittuosis, but I carry the pain. And I tell the pain, you last, I first. And I, it's all my, the, the, my, my, my future, my tomorrow is what captures me. I get up for, them, for my tomorrow. I don't get up for my pain. And I remember one day, somewhere around seven o'clock, I said to myself, oh my goodness, you know, I haven't felt a pain for the day. But you know the pain was there? But I didn't feel it because I was so focused during that whole day, encapsulated in all that I was doing there, very much alive in that. And I, and I realized how these things work. So, so it's important for you to see. And I just want to recap before I close here. That's one thing. Ah, there's this whole thing here where we. This whole thing about the today, I, I like that. I, 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 was put on, I can see my tomorrow, but I must first live today first. I must first live today. And I want to help you realize, don't sit on those values. Don't compete with your pain. I don't. I go forth and I do that which my intent 
overpowers the weakness of my body. So, ladies, let's live our tomorrows. Let's be, let's breathe, let's live, let's move, and let's continue to be blessed. Amen. Any questions and answers? I have to answer this. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Dr. Niles, for that very edifying presentation. Your enthusiasm to present and interact with us is quite greatly appreciated and, and quite phenomenal. So thank you so much. And also thank you for sharing your very beautiful and trendy wife with us. You finish the adjectives. You have more adjectives than them. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was very, very interesting. And, you know, everything was quite on point. Yeah, so thank you again. Um, at this point, we want to break, you know, take a short two-minute um, break, and we'll come back to do the question and answers with you, Dr. Niles. So we are just offering a short two-minute break. All right? Okay. We could do what we want in that break. Eh? Who is GD? Hi, GD. Huh? No, I'm talking to GD. Oh, they muted me? No. It's a break. I don't know what we want to do. Go to the bathroom, go to the podcast, or to talk to somebody. Say hi. Hi, Bridget. Hi, Dr. Niles. You are not muted. <laughs> Am I supposed to be muted? I'm talking to you. No, I said, no I you, you can talk. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I didn't plan to be muted. But it's a break. I, we, I know you. We could, I, can, like, I, I can get to know somebody during the break. <laughs> I met you a couple of years ago at Nalis. You came to speak for International oh. Men's Day. Oh, that's who you are. Okay. Nice to meet you again. Yes. Yeah, well, I, you're, the, you're the short one, the tall one. I guess most of us were short. <laughs> so you're the, you're the fair skin one? You let me see your face now, oh gosh. You're so Not in a position to share my face. <laughs> Me, you're in a position or you have on your wig. <laughs> correct, correct. <laughs> I do not have on the wig. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No? Okay, okay. All right. I want her to wash it. Are you pretty? Oh yeah, you wash it. You wash it quickly. Okay, right, go ahead. Well, you will say goodbye. My wife is saying goodbye. She will still hear you. Good night. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Okay, she still hear you. Good night. Okay. All right, Doctor Nice. We realize that you, you, you. You're not really into the going for the break thing. Yeah, I took a break from talking to you. I, it might, you didn't tell me what to do, you know. You didn't tell me to go to the bathroom. Well, we're the... back. We're back because oh. you're, you're, you're quite engaging. So we are here for it. Yeah? So what we're going to do, we're going to turn over now to the moderator of the session. Um, we are asking the attendees, if you have questions, you can place them in the chat box. And Miss Lisa Dukey, our one of our directors, she's the moderator tonight. Lisa, are you with us? Yes, I am. Okay, good night. So good evening. He would be taking the questions and um, presenting them to you, Dr. Niles. So everyone, if you have your questions, place them in the chat box so that we can engage Dr. Niles even further. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Dr. Niles, is your screen still, um, are you still sharing your screen? Should I take it off? I would appreciate it, thanks. Okay. So I just want to let you know I said thank you and it has been a pleasure. <laughs> oh my God, I love this one. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Okay, so good evening, everyone. 
welcome, a special welcome to those who are joining us for the first time and um, to do a welcome to those who are already members. Um, Dr. Niles, I echo the sentiments of the others. What an impactful presentation. You brought a totally different, um, a new um, dynamic to this, this um, spotlight and endometriosis. You, and I just wanna say before we get into the question and, and answer segments, before um, seg um, sessions prior to this, we would normally sit quietly and listen to the to the presenter. I'm sorry, you would listen to the presenters and um, then move on to the moderator and get into the question and answer. But um, we have recognized that you are, um, you're not one for that. So we don't usually allow persons um, to put their um, cameras on, or mics on. We actually have somebody who sits and, and monitors that. And as soon as somebody puts on their camera, we, we, we take them off we, um, or we mute them. But we saw you brought it to a different light. Um, once again, I know it was read before, but I still have to do this. So I need to read the, the disclaimer the, from the Trinidad and Tobago Endometriosis Association, uh, just to remind people, persons that the information shared on this program is for general informational and educational purposes only. It does not constitute professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment for individuals. Please consult your healthcare provider if you have questions about your health before or before starting any treatment. And with that said, now we can get into the question and answer. Um, I got permission from um, my superiors that since you seem to be one that like that seems to like the interaction that um, we can um, we can have some persons um, turn on their um, their cameras if they would like um, when they are speaking with you. Um, so one of the one question we want the question that I would like to start off with is how can a patient seek effective care if no one believes her, believes the severity of her symptoms? If no one believes that she is severe, as she Believe, says she is. Believes the severity of her symptoms. Well, care is important, and that comes from the outside. Uh, you are therefore looking at the primary care, which may be a doctor, and the secondary care, which will be the family members. Uh, the doctor's cool because you, that's a visitation issue, and then you take you get the pharmac the pharmacology issue. You you take a medication, but you are living with what is considered in that context. But that secondary care becomes primary now because that's who you have. Now the issue of emotion here is important, and the issue of expectation. So that even though there is nothing physical seen, and it's not in people's minds. Uh, that is one of those chronic diseases that can kill you tomorrow, for instance, like cancer or leukemia, one of those. So that when you talk about endometriosis or when you talk about liver disease, or you, yeah, I know you're sick, but you can because people have categorized illnesses in context of the culture of what we say diseases. So for you to to have that kind of response, one may need to sit down with one's family and engage this kind of forum in sharing what it is. And you yourself need to let them know by your own concept of finding your tomorrow, your today, sorry, and then find your tomorrow. That shows them, look, 
I am willing, but at your own pace. I'm not saying to rush in and rush around the house. But if you, the, the, fast, the fastest you can move, that may be slow to them, but that's your fastest. At least there is movement, which helps them to work along with you. I remember when I could not walk any faster than a snail. And it was like people, I had people have to, they said, you really can walk? I said, you don't need to believe me. Just know one thing. I'm going from X to Y. I will reach the kitchen soon enough. My soon is going to be enough for me, not you. So I had to individualize me and own my concept, concepts, own my speed, own my care, and work it. On the other hand, how do I work the emotion? Because I will have expectations that my family should support me. It may be necessary to find support outside of that, because they, with, and to work that. So that they are, we have to keep looking for the ways to find that physical support. I, I shouldn't say physical, but that human support, because the human element is important in building. Because all that I said tonight, you realize there's always that connectivity with somebody else. I, I, I didn't say it a lot, but I hope you saw it. Whether I'm female function, whether I'm woman, I have to establish and create, create. So that it's always a connectivity somewhere. And I have to look for that. Okay. Um, but you know, as an endometriosis patient myself, I remember there were times, because it's an ill that you cannot see from the outside, because sometimes you, you may not necessarily lose um, a lot of weight as with some other, as with diabetes and some other um, illnesses. Um, some, it's difficult to on going through. And in, so some, so in turn, sometimes and to think that you're either attention seeking Sometimes um, at your work, they tend to think that you, you're just lazy. You don't want to come to work. You're probably going to spend the day at the beach. Are you, are you, are you, I you free myself. Then, sir, are you free to share what you're suffering, the disease? Are you sh free to say, I have endometriosis, and this is what it means, and this is what it is? Uh, are we free to do that with our loved ones? Or is that yes. a secret? I think that's where no, I wouldn't. I think that's where the, the, the change is. You have to educate you, you because we are ignorant of a lot of things. You know, I mean, this word was something I knew, but I never really studied until two weeks ago. And now, and it's like yeah, and that's and that's the thing. Um, people people don't people don't really um try to access information until somebody they close to them is um is actually um, diagnosed with it and then they, they rush to find out well, what is this um, mm -hmm. but um, in the interest of time I just want to move on to another um, question what what do you tell a patient who has lost everything to endometriosis Be sorry Be before you go there uh, before you go there I think that before you end that one we could we could finish the other one that one's a the one below that, how to address the taboo associated with endometriosis and mental health. That goes to what we we're saying just now, because as I was saying, it can be a taboo because we're not saying anything about it. So we are afraid that if we say our femininity is questioned, I don't want anybody to know that maybe I'm not fertile or maybe I have this problem. So that again, we have to break through these taboos by sharing and being, may I say, not, not, you don't have to be a proud, but Accept the fact, look, I have this. This is it. I, I when I, I was still walking up and down to do everything. And one day I was in an elevator and a lady said to me, you know, you're for Bervia, how are you? I, but she didn't expect the answer. I said, I'm not too good with the how, but right now I have all these pains, so, so, so. And she looked at me and she gave me a whole diagnosis. And I said, who are you? She said, I'm a doctor. And what you're suffering. And so I, she said, I'm glad you said it. 
because if you didn't see it, I could think that you were really trying a smart thing with me. So I learned from them that it is important to share. Now, again, the issue is about the, being female is the next thing. Now, you might say that gender thing, because females may not want to be so open and transparent. Because, you know, mommy told us this how females, you know, you uh, could be less private and secretive. Or, but it is about your tomorrow. And people need to be educated. So I think we need to wipe away that, that, that those taboos and, and let people know this thing is existing here. It's the same thing with cancers. A lot of us do not know, and I have to start reading up on arthritis, sorry, arthritis and osteoporosis and fibromyalgia. All these things are coming my way because pain management and the whole concept now of how can the psychologists help me manage my daily outlook. And that is so vital. So I want us to see we can overcome the taboo. We can overcome that issue of the depression that comes from the, the inability to rise over. Because I feel I'm so nothing. And that's why today I thought it's best to let you know you're still feminine. You're still woman. You're still mother. And therefore, that gives you that kind of CBT contact, that cognitive behavior. Bringing those words, bringing that mind into an activity where you can function. Yes, and I'm, I, I must say that that was very comforting. That um, that information was very, very... Uh, so, um, can I go ahead to the other question I was going to read? Yes, yes go ahead. Um, what do you... What do you, what do you, matrices, job, social support, husband, level of endometriosis care is ineffective and she is left for dead. Well, well I, I started, when we first came out there, I was looking at that question before. Well, if she's left for oh, dead, I hope the questions. she still wants to live. You see, she could be left for dead, but does she want to live? Anybody could be left for dead. I was left for dead. The doctor told my wife, I go dead by midnight on that particular night. My wife decided he ain't dead, him, but I did also know I didn't, wasn't go dead neither because I never planned to dead. But the people out there who leaves you from doctors, everybody. Uh, but we must ourselves want to live. So that this 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 patient here must want to live. Where you when you that's the beginning. After you decided that, you must realize what is your capacity. So that the job social support has been fertility incapacitated by the disease. Fine, it, it, it is breaking you down. And I, and I, I could see, let me align this is one, one of my patients who has chronic um, arthritis, that thing, um, arthritis, the arthritis one, the, the one that cripples your fingers. Oh, it just slipped on my head. Rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, and I have had to help her define how to work. So we, we have gone through some therapy and I even found myself teaching her how to handle a spade and a fork so that she can get to the garden and hold it differently, but yet in a way she can dig and she can move. So therefore, there are ways in which we can help people to mobilize, to be mobilized. Now, it has to do with the mind. This is very mental here. I am not dead. You cannot dead me. I can only dead myself. Because intermediosis is not dead in me. It is just making me non-functional at this point. But there are some things around me that I can still find. I can, I can write. I can dictate. I can teach. I can share. I can find something. There's something always in my mind that somebody could do. Twist something, make something. I am. I stop looking at foreign TV because when I look at one day, everything you, you see, you can twist a wire, you make something. You can twist a paper, they sell ninety nine dollars on, on on on. 
simple thing. There is innovation there. So even though there's no job, no support, the fertility issue, incapacitated, that I'm not too sure what the level of fertility is, and you, you may know that, but there must be somewhere where the mind can exercise a, a, fert a fertile option, a fertile thought, a fertile exercise. There must be something there that we can find for that patient to do. But alas, the patient must not agree that she is left with that. Okay. Okay. And I have a comment here from one of my colleagues who um, they revert to that's normal and it seems to change. Um, because you... well, but again, but... But again, 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 I, growing up with mommy and, and people around me, that's, that's true, you know, uh, I didn't know that fibroids was a serious thing or interbusiosis or, I mean, I've used the term several times because you know the term is out there, but it was, you, you didn't realize until my friend who when she said, the doctor said, make sure you don't get pregnant again before you go dead. And then we had to open in there. But there are a lot of other diseases that are female oriented that we do not know because we just have not been told. We talk about cancer, but that is general. So when you talk about fallopian tubes and cervical, like cervical cancer, what was that? Oh, she just have a pain. It's period pain. Okay. Drink some orange or, orange peel tea and some garlic and fix up now. You know, go tie your head with some beer rum and go and lie down. You know, it, it was that kind of thing. So that to come now in the 20th century and realize, or 21st century, and realize that these things are just not for beer rum and for tie head. Uh, <laughs> to stop it with something. It, it needs an attention. We, we are looking for education. And I, 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 I commend and applaud TTEA for that, that you have in this monthly forum where you are educated. I wish you would invite. I, I, I am sorry that I don't see the people that I invite. I invited my entire men's group and I don't see any of them. I'm going to tell them this is not good at all. They need, could they have wives? They have wives, and I know some of their wives are going through the uterus issue and, and all those things, which can eventually come into the um, intermediate because there's bleeding and there's excessive menstruation and there's this one. And I tell them the other day, we just can't just pray. I'm very practical, you know, you could pray one, but we have to work it both sides. You could need it, but what are we doing yes, yes. in terms of how to work? So I am beginning to look in research, to, to look at diets, the, the whole nutrition, exercise, how can we help clients have a full comprehensive, what we call a holistic approach to healing. It is not just a prayer, it's not just my pharmacology. And I'm recognizing uh, after doing a series on the mind, on mental health, uh, the, there's a verse that says, your body prospers even as your soul prospers. Your body's in good health. So that for my body to be in good health, I have to have a good mind. And a lot of women, they have stressful issues because the banker horn, bad child, you know, man bringing in STDs for you. Is a lot of thing going on there? A lot of thing. So you are, I, I tell my, I is both my men, you know, limited, don't ill treat. I told my son, if you cannot learn to keep your house, your one bedroom clean and cannot treat your sister well, you is not marrying. Because you're not leaving my house to go out and treat no woman. Because we we have to protect. I, you talk about my wife. I protect she. You know, I can make she look good, but nobody comes to her as my wife. My father one way to, she, he talked to my wife and he said, excuse me, father. That is my wife. Do not speak to her like that. Her as a, let me tell you something. That is my wife. Your wife is across there. You do not know who she is. You would ask she why she do what she do. You come to Gishi talk. Hold on. 
nobody speaks to her how they want. And she know anybody come to ask she why she wear makeup, why she she instead of go ask him and then go ask me. So that I, I want to get my men to come to the next one. I want to make sure they come because we need to learn about these illnesses. And that is how, ladies, we will decrease and diminish the taboo, the insignificance that you, you suffer, the, 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 the rejection, and those kinds of psychological inferences or infractions that are imposed on you. Oh, here comes one of my ladies. Paul imposed on you. We, we need to, 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 to work that out. We need to work that out. So, uh, you know, the, the, yes, the holistic approach is important. Anyway, let, let, me, let, me, let me stop because you know we can say it at 9 o'clock. Okay. okay. <laughs> <Are you thinking? laughs> yes. I, I just want to read. I want to read another one for you. <laughs> From a young age, 10, 11, we didn't have the skills to cope with such a level of pain. And our parents also did not, as they were told, that is normal. How do I now reframe my thinking to get to this place? I feel like endometriosis spotted me from a lot. This is how 10 year old? No, this is an adult asking the question oh. now. How, oh. how? Because she's, well, what she's saying is that back then, Back then, um, she was told that it's normal, but having, what, um, what normal? having had access to the sort of information, the pain ends of endometriosis. Did the, did the parent know what it was? Because, because that, that's the general, that's the general consent. Endometriosis I, I is associated are, with... I think parents sometimes are ignorant too of the, the knowledge and... Um, they know that once there's some kind of uh, mishap or situation, irregularity, sorry, within the product, reproductive system, there's going to be pain because you have pain through period, your menstruation, your pain through pregnancy, etc. So once something a pain is a normal thing without again, not, we come right back, Lisa, to the issue of educating. Uh, the issue. I think that that's a primary thing in terms of these diseases. We must pay attention educating um, and I think now that you are forcing me to think that even when I'm doing premarital counseling that uh, I need to bring that in because I have had people who come days a year after and say I say boy how things go where well, you know she she what is she she's suffering from he got he ready to go you know but he didn't marry she for that he married she for some good sex and some children but now she have a dot, and he looking for another thing. <laughs> so you 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 have to bring him into place. Of what I have a I, I remember years ago, uh, I had this couple engaged, and some weeks, some months before, month or two months before the marriage, she suffered from a heart attack, and the doctor said she, you know, she her heart was bad, and he got in her. He in a way to find out the, the, how bad the heart was. Well, he got. And I became very sensitive then about how, but over the years, you kind of wean in terms of the sensitivity and the approach. But I, this has made me a little more come back to that age where you have to help men appreciate the value and what women do go through, those weaknesses and how to support that. So that in that question, the parent needs to be paid. But if there is, again, if the mother, if that woman is now educated, she needs to sit down and educate. Uh, because we really can't say, you can't say what you say, you have said it. We really can't say that daddy can't say that or parents can't say because they don't know any better. But if they have the education and they realize what's happening, uh, they can work because we don't want them to wait till you're getting ready, ill and dead, and they say, if I didn't know. We know we like that phrase, if I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know. But you can know. So it comes down to that. Um, before we continue, I just want to, to say to the um, virtual audience that we are um, it's going to be placed 
is in this chat that I am that we're reading from where we're putting our comments and um, we would really appreciate if um, it's, it's not it's not very long um, we would really appreciate your, your feed not certain how many new persons we have here um, but if you would if you are new if this is your first time joining us and you would like to become a member of the TTA um, you can uh, leave your contact information and we would, we would uh, contact you. Um, in the meantime, um, I am reading, and, um, while that is being uh, done, soon the link will, will be placed there. I'm seeing here, um, someone said that based on Dr. Nair's response, the patient's will to live. How does the patient living with this chronic painful disease. And Dr. Niles, I just want to say that I, it seems we keep going, we, we keep coming, how do we? I, I missed and, your question. You um, I don't question. Do you, see the, you keep breaking, Just repeat the question. Oh, I'm breaking, you're not hearing me clearly. Now here you clearly, but it's breaking up. But just repeat the question. You spoke about you freezing. Yeah. Develop. You you hear me clearly? I hear you. How now. does the patient develop? After this, well, I didn't hear anything. Hello? <laughs> you see if you keep, okay, you're gone? Oh, yeah, you if, Let us put it back into everybody. I know that they must give you the, the question by yourself. So we could all, I, I could see it. Oh, sorry to me. Is everyone hearing me now? No, no. Yes. Yes, we're here now. After okay. the setup, is what? Okay, so let me go back. Uh, oh, I have lost everything. I have lost everything. Um. What's your memory saying? Hi, Lisa. Was it empty? Again from the group? Yes, from one of our members. Yes. Let me just read it for you. I think this is the one, but I wasn't hearing you, Clary. Based on Dr. Nile's response, was it that? Yes, yes. Okay. So Thank based you. on Dr. Nile's response, the patient's will to live. How does the patient develop that will to live while living with this chronic and painful disease? And Dr. Niles, um, before you answer, um, I was going to come make, say something before you answer because I, I realize that we keep going in circles because we keep, it, it, it keeps coming back to the chronic pain. And I understand where that person is coming from because endometriosis is something that can really, really, really paralyze you even as a, a as a as a very young um person it can really paralyze you so i i understand why you know people are asking that question that question keeps coming up you know how when i am having this sort of chronic pain because i can share from my experience there there were times when i was in chronic pain and not even morphine was helping so I am in the nursing home and they are pumping morphine. It's still not helping. So, you know, when you talk about the, the, the will to live and all of that, um, you know, I think, I think people are still not really clear about when I'm in that state, how do I, how do I, have, how do I find that will to continue going on, carrying on? We were carrying on quite well, um, and we were doing our 
studies and you know, entrepreneurship and managerial work. We were advancing. And one day a pain comes or we have a discomfort or period pain continue, or the period continues too long. And we go to the doctor, do the checks and oops, endometriosis. Oh my gosh. And then the pain starts. Oh Lord. Before that, you had a will. There was a will. There was a will. Before that, you had a future. And I'm saying that we have to learn how not to make the pain and the present knowledge from the doctor stall us, or rather take the breath out of our bodies. We have to see that we have the capacity with the pain to go forward because the pain is still there. You still can breathe. Therefore, let's make best of the breathing with the pain. And I've learned over the years medically that the more we breathe properly, it helps because the pain actually is a, is a significant, it signifies that there's an absence of oxygen in that particular area. And we could understand why with the endometriosis there is an absence because again, like any other thing, when, when a tissue holds on to another, like the organ here, when it holds on to the lung or the ovaries, it has to survive. How is it surviving? Two ways, blood and, blood and air, oxygen. So it metastasizes with that organ and finds oxygen. And we teach that in, in gerontology in our theories, that whole issue of free radical, uh, trying to find the DNAs there and so that the tissue now is growing out. So in terms of pulling that oxygen away from the ovaries into this new tissue, that's where you're There's a war going on between piece of, piece of lining and ovary. Come, I want some oxygen here. I want some, hey, no, this is mine. I want some oxygen here. No, I want some oxygen because I have to be into misuses. No, you, so we, I get with getting some medication or some chemotherapy or some to see if we can ease the pain, but we are still not dealing with that fight. What we need is really to find methodologies. That means deep breathing exercises, helping to balance the blood and oxygen level in both and to see how best we can cause one to start fighting the other. And they could maybe hypothetically live peaceably, but helping that too is our mind. How do I get the body enacted? Because you see, if I allow the body to sit back down there and take the pain medication, by the time that pain medication elapses, I'm back to, to feeling it again. Because the pain medication gives the a jolt where there's a balance of hormones in, in, into the body, there's a balance of oxygen, the DNAs are much more life. And so you could have a rest for a couple of hours. Aha, uh -huh, it's back to war again. So I'm saying that with all that's happening, we, we are working the pharmacology for that area, but we still have the will in us that's in bread to continue doing what we did before. It has to be, as I said just now, do you want to live? Do you want to still get that degree? Do you want to be that manager? Do you still want to be the, the head of your department? Yes, we still have to go through. So it's about pushing beyond. Literally, it's a mental thing. It is, and, with the, and that's now, apart from that, we need some support and we have TTEA who is supporting each of you. As you share, hey, so we are supporting Bridget, we're supporting Chan, we're supporting Mohammed. Hey, we are going forward, and sister, sister, we could do it together. And that word together really epitomizes the context of I'm not alone. I have help. I have support. And that support does create an empathos, a drive to go forward. And I could see that happening. So how do I develop that? I can't, I can't do it alone. I need TTEA. I need a support group. But within me, I, I am the generator. I start. I am the genesis. I say I can achieve. And TTEA comes and says, we will achieve. 
But if you sit out in your corner, you might cry by yourself and nobody to hand you a towel, you have TTEE to say, hey, try those tears. Let me go down the road here. Let me buy that piece of land. Let me go and do that degree. Let me get going, Gil. Hey, Gil, Gil, let me do that, Gil. Come on. Hussey, we come back just now. You don't help with her, but she ain't go dead. We gonna make sure she ain't go dead. So all of you have a responsibility for each other. I charge you tonight the responsibility to keep each other alive and to help each other develop that will to live. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Niles. Unfortunately, we have time. I know that you will be joining us again next month for the uh, endometriosis awareness month march um so uh before i hand you back over i just i know this we were in a group forum here i just want to say to um persons here if there's anyone who would like to um see dr niles um at his office for further um some some work with him you can contact him He's at 672-8184. I repeat, 68184. Um, when you contact his office, um, you guys will, can work out um, whatever fees um, is associated with his, um, his expertise. So Dr. Niles, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for sharing your time your talent and your treasure with the TTE. I now hand over back to Christy. Thank you for thanking me. Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. Yes, uh, Miss M Miss Mora. Yeah, yeah. read the, the 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 phone number again. The second time you read it, you left out some numbers. His phone number. Oh, Doctor Niles. Um, I can write it. His phone number. I'm yes. sorry. Six. Six seven two eight one eight four. Thank you. That was the one you read earlier. That, yes, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. All right. Thank you so much, Lisa. And um, Dr. Nyes again. So um, we want to just do some, a little bit of housekeeping here before we close up. Um, as we know, next month, March month is endometriosis month. And as always, the TTA um, hosts or is hosting this time um, a few activities to, you know, to commemorate the month. And um, we have, well, firstly, on the 6th of March is our next Spotlight Endometriosis session. On the 12th of March, we have our teen seminar. And I know at that seminar, we would also have um, Miss, Miss Rabia, Miss Rabia Khan, Mrs. Khan, and Mrs. Anna Maria Mora there. I don't think it's Mrs. Khan. I think it's Miss Anna Maria Mora would be presenting there. We have on the 13th of March, we host the patient's webinar from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. Registration is required for all. We have members, um, $40 TT and non-members, $60 to register. Uh, we are hosting over 10 presenters on that day. So I don't think we would want to miss that. Some of the topics that would be discussed are endometriosis and its related conditions, endometriosis and fertility, uh, management of symp symptoms and complementary approaches. So make sure and um, register, get the word out, uh, all that is happening in March. The places that we can register, website www.endott.org. Facebook, Trinidad and Tobago Endometriosis Association, Instagram, at TT Endosource, and our email, of course, where we can guide you through the process of registration, endosource.tt at gmail.com. Uh, on the 14th, we have our second nurses seminar, virtual seminar. 
on the 20th, 20th we have a special endometriosis spot, spotlight endometriosis session for doctors. And on the 27th, it ends with our virtual endo walk. So we have a, a bit of you know, activities planned for March month. So we're asking persons to spread the word and get registered. Again, I want to reiterate what um, Lisa would have mentioned earlier about the link, the feedback survey link being shared in the chat. We're asking, you know, kindly asking people to complete the survey for us so that we can, you know, improve on our sessions as we go along. So take a check out in the chat and uh, the link is there. We can complete the survey. So um, to wrap up, the TTA would like to extend an, a heartfelt thank you to you, Dr. Niles. Heartfelt, heartfelt thank you um, for sharing your expertise with us. As Lisa would have posited um, earlier on, you have really enlightened us in a very engaging and unorthodox fashion. And, <laughs> and we loved it. <laughs> we loved it and we thank you so much for that, you know. Um, can, I, I, can I just interject for a second? So we no. know um, now that we have um, experienced him for, for the first time at Spotlight, we know what to expect when he is at the <laughs> is um, patients, when you he's at the patient's point. seminar um, yeah. in March, yeah. when he is presenting, we, we would, we would, we know, we know what to expect, okay? <laughs> Don't apologize, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so um, we also want to thank Miss Mrs. Rabia Khan and Mrs. Miss Anna Maria Mora for gracing us with their presence tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to the attendees, both local and the international, and thank you to the board of directors and the executive members, you know, for working tirelessly to you know, make this series possible and better every time we have it. So thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. And have a wonderful night. See you in the next Spotlight Endometriosis session on the 6th. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks very much. Almost thank done. you. Good night. Good night, Dr. Niles. Yeah. Have a good, good evening. Night to see good, night. good 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 night. night. Good night. Good night. I'm Bob with H. Wow. Okay. Amber <laughs> Grand, Khadija, thanks.